Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, bonjour, adieu, all that good jazz. Adieu is goodbye. Oh, excuse me, adieu, pardon me, adieu, I'm gonna walk out. <laughs> Eddie, Eddie, just shut up and continue with the, and get with the cast pod. Yes, 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 whatever, monkey. Anyway, welcome to Critical Loading Air. As always, we've got good Bob on the mic and Miss... Felicity. Hello. She's going to be sitting around for a while. Yep. Say hi to the audience. I agree we did. She did. Yeah, she did. Duh. Anyways. Okay. Felicity, what have you been playing this week? <laughs> so, uh, my, my wonderful boyfriend made the bad mistake of buying me Final Fantasy XIV and a subscription. And it's like crack, and that's my life right now. <laughs> so <laughs> it's 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 really nice. I I really enjoy it. I played the beta for it, but I just I ended up not buying it at the time because I didn't have money to pay for a subscription. And now that I'm playing it, I'm like, why didn't I do this sooner? I, that's, I think that's typical of almost all MMOs. Well, I won't say all MMOs, but you know, good MMOs. It's like, oh my god, why didn't I do this and you know, buy this and play this sooner? Well, because uh, well, you wouldn't have a life. It, well, the worst part of it for me is the fact that I played Final Fantasy XI, like, literally until they were like, yeah, so we announced 14. If you want to, you know, port your characters over to the some of the legacy servers, you are welcome to do so. And everything, and I'm like, I'm gonna start all new characters. Da 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 da. And then, so I'm not on any of the legacy servers because I was dumb and chose not to do that. But uh, yeah, it's just it's it's really fun. I really enjoy it. It's easy to get into. I already have three characters. I have a problem. I think I need to go to meetings. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I mean, if you're enjoying the game, that's, ex you know, of course, that's exactly what it's for. So. I may get a game over here. <laughs> you might lose that one. What? Okay, you're saying you're, you're going to get a game over here? And I'm yes. just like, wait, you're about to lose? Why? <laughs> anyway! Okay, for this week for me, I've been all over the stinking board, so to speak. It's been like I played Heroes of the Storm earlier this week, played League of Legends, played Skyrim, played a little bit of Castle in the Darkness. I might have played Hearthstone, I might not have, or I might have just fired it up just to get the uh, deck card backing. Ugh. Yeah, it's been just one of those weeks where it's just been bounce, 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 bounce. So. Bob? Huh? What have all you been into this week? We're not completing that level. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've been, I found a little game on um, Android called Relic Run. It's, um, it's essentially Imagine Temple Run, but with uh, Tomb Raider. And yeah, that's kind of been my crack this week. Um, but uh, a little bit of a little, I know I've been playing some other games. I think I played Hearthstone earlier in the week. Got tired of it and kind of moved away. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think of if I've played anything else. Uh, played a little bit of Smash. Oh, we played Brawlhalla. Yes, Brawlhalla. I, I forgot that one. Played with some Binding of Isaac. Uh, rebirth. Um, been playing a lot of my Switch Force. So, you know, just the typical bit of here and there. Um, also, since I, because uh, Brawlhalla made me want to play Smash a little bit, so I actually, like, changed some controls a little bit and, like, made sure that kind of worked a little bit. Um, and I actually, today, I went on and I submitted my ballot for which character I'd like to see in Smash. And hey, it's Klonoa. I'm playing this right here. And this kind of lets us little sidetrack a little bit into this because we have until October 3rd and uh, until the bow's closed, so 
talk a little bit about Smash characters. Um, but yeah, I was surprised that Klonoa was never announced as a playable uh, character in Smash because Namco Bandai helped uh, develop the game. And I don't know, just look at Klonoa. He looks like he'd be perfect for a Nintendo fighting game. He looks, he, he pretty much fits in with the rest of the Nintendo cast. Um, and they tried to re reboot to reboot him and get the brain series back on the Wii, and of course it really didn't work, which is sad because this game is wonderful. Um, so yeah, I really think he needs a shot. Um, otherwise, it probably would have. Uh, Eddie knows that I have my heart set on uh, Magus appearing one day. Uh, but also, I, there are two campaigns going right now: one for uh, uh, Shantae and the other one for Shovel Knight, both of which I think work out as well. So. Um, Really, uh, what character would you like to see in Smash, Eddie? Have you filled out your ballot? Ow. I've not exactly done the fill-out ballot, but if I'm going to pick a character, it's probably going to be Shovel Knight, because he seems to be unique and interesting enough uh -huh. to definitely go in. I want to know what his abilities would be, if anything. Uh, you like, I don't know if they were going to give him... What? Uh, jump down on head? Well, that one is obvious, but what I'm talking about is, like, okay, are they going to give him, like the phase locket, or like his fireball, or something like else with his armor that he was able to do, like swiping and swinging, things like that. I imagine they would do what, something like that, yeah. Yeah, what all are they going to give him as far as ability-wise go? Because it seems that with these kinds of uh, characters that would definitely be unique going in, someone like the man himself, Shovel Knight, would know like, what he could do exactly. And then Shantae. I wonder what Shantae would do as well. Hair Whip. Uh, plus she has all her transformations. And Shantae the Pirate's Curse actually introduced just items like um, the Pirate's Hat and all that other stuff. Okay. So definitely reason two definitively reasonable yeah. characters that could have no I ever, doubt. Have I ever uh, explained why I think Magus would be a perfect fighting character on the pack, uh, before, like, I don't think you have. Why don't you go in depth on that? Um, well, it's just got me to thinking, especially when they introduce Final Smashes, that um, Magus has a perfect Final Smash already, and that's um, what's this? What's it called? The um, the, uh, it's a, it's a signature move that he uses. Uh, I I missed the jump entirely. Uh, but he he has a Final Smash already picked out, and that's. What uh, I forget what the name is. It's Delta something or other. It's his big signature attack he uses on you in his boss fight. Um, but you know, and then all his B special attacks could be uh, magic attacks because he's a uh, magic user. And I think the scythe would be have nice reach, would work really well um, as just a standard weapon. And in general, I think um, it'd be a nice, refreshing change of pace from all the sword wielders we have. Oh, oh my god, yes, all of the... All of the sword wielders. Honestly, it's one of the reasons, another one of the reasons why, when it comes to Fire Emblem characters, I kind of wish they would add someone like Hector in. Mm -hmm. Or Ephraim, for that matter. Ephraim being a lance wielder, so... Mm -hmm. No doubt there. Uh, Felicity, do you, do you happen to have a character in Smash Brothers you would want to see? Uh, see, my thing with it is that I'm not playing Smash Brothers because I don't have a Wii U, so I know I'm not going to play it anytime soon. But watching some of the votes, like uh, Kotaku has a great article about the best Smash Bros. character requests, and there are two that I would actually get behind. One being the reckless silhouette guy that's on the, at the beginning of every single Wii game. The guy that they just show his silhouette of him like slapping people with either the remote or hitting a TV with the remote. Having him be in there, because that would be hilarious. Or, I think, let's see if I can find it. Okay, someone put in Tom Nook from Animal Crossing because you owe him money and now he's fucking pissed. So, that would probably be the most hilarious character in my opinion. Just Tom Nook all ticked off because you owe him money and he's beating the crap out of people. I think that'd be great. 
I don't, I'm not taking a serious approach to the votes, though, because I have a feeling that even though there's a vote for it, no matter what, Nintendo's going to choose what Nintendo wants to choose. I don't think that they're going to, they'll, they'll take consideration on the highest voted ones, but I don't think that they're going to really go, oh, so someone voted, you know, like, God, what are some of the, like, someone voted Bayonetta to be the top one. We're totally going to add her in. I doubt that they're going to yeah. completely go with that. So. Yeah. I, I, but, I agree uh, with that. Um, but I think that uh, support for characters, I, I've always, I've always support, said, if you're going to, to go for a Smash character or try to say, I want this a Smash character, make it make sense. It should, it should fit certain criteria as far as why it should be a, a Smash characters. A Smash character. Certain characters don't make sense. Ridley has never made sense as a viable Smash character. In my honest opinion, none of the Smash characters in any of the Smash games that I have played make absolutely no sense as to why they would be hanging around each other. Like, Solid yeah. Snake, chilling with Mario. Doesn't make sense. Or chilling with the Pokemon dudes. Doesn't make sense. So, it's... Smash Brothers, in my opinion, is an amalgamation of if we, like, cross-universed every single franchise Nintendo has, this is what would happen. Yeah. Like, that's how I see it. So, it doesn't have to make sense. Well, I mean... Because it hasn't made sense ever to... ever. <laughs> I've always talked about... Well, there's a point in why I say about viable characters. Um... Um, like, take your example for uh, Magus, an example. Something, you know, someone who could actually be implemented in. Yeah. Someone like Goku cannot. Somebody like Ridley. Ridley is too large of a character. Makes a perfect boss character. Not so great for Smash. I just think it's pretty much a free-for-all type game where pretty much any character could be put in if they really wanted to put them in. And it's not going to matter if they actually make sense or not. I also think that's why they added the whole Miis in. Well, I, I actually said that... I, I actually uh, said that Miis should, should have made sense. Um, they could, they could, there could have been a good way to implement Miis. I said this way back on, for Brawl. I was actually surprised because, you know... Well... Ah, crap. The main thing I was going with was, mm -hmm. you know, the whole Miis. Like, okay, now you can add anyone to the battle. You want to have Goku be in the battle? Well, guess what? Boom! Goku can now be in the battle. But it's just in me form. Yeah. Um... You know, the reason I chose Klonoa is because, um... He looks like a, very, he looks like a character that would just fit into Smash, and he has, um... He has some very interesting mechanics I think they could make a good move set out of. Um, Shantae and Shovel Knight, again, uh, I think that they have viable move sets and whatnot that could fit in there. I'm good, yeah. So, I mean, I look at viability as far as could they make an actual character and are not. Which is, I think, this is what um, the creators behind Smash will be looking at. So I try to look at it from a realistic point of view. No doubt. Okay. So. Gonna segue out of Smash. To another topic that was really, really hot this week. If memory serves me correctly. And does uh, some of the times. On Wednesday of this week. We had the big hot drop. Big announcement of Fallout 4. Which, that incredibly blew up the internet. And people just went crazy and crazy. It was like, oh my god, Fallout 4 confirmed. Whoosh. And during that little niche time, there was an article that was released on Polygon. I don't think very many people were looking at it at the time of the Fallout 4 stuff because when I woke up on Thursday and I started looking around, I saw this come across my Twitter feed and it was the article on 
colorblind on Witcher 3, Rust, and Gaming's race problem. This... And the hashtag was games so white. If memory serves me correctly again. And the big hotly debated topic was the Witcher 3 having, as far as their human races go, all Caucasian slash white characters in the game. There was no diversity or people of color as far as the humans went. Now, yes, there were other races within the game, but as far as the humans went, it was just people of white color. And this sparked huge debates on, like, Twitter. There were other articles, people responding to it via blogs. And it just turned into one huge, huge explosion. So I'm going to throw it to Felicity first. Because I know that when this came out, you and I, we discussed, we actually got to look at it. We discussed this kind of at length. So, I want to get your opinions now that it's kind of, well, it's still fresh and out there, but it's kind of cooled and simmered, so to speak. <laughs> After I've had more time to think on it? Yeah, yes. Yeah. So, here's the thing, looking at The Witcher 3, the whole thing, I'm going to go kind of in the way that the original article was written. First of all, everyone complaining about the thing with Rust and about the fact that your race is randomly assigned now and you cannot change it. Um, people can hate on me. Deal with it. It's. I think it's a great way to deal with the problem. Um, and I actually think that's a great game mechanic. You don't see your character anyway. You can pretend you're playing whoever you want to. Doesn't matter. Just stop the bitching. It's ridiculous. Um, the thing with The Witcher is so... CD Projekt, the people that developed The Witcher, is a Danish company. The area they live in is the whitest population in the universe, as we know it. And they are also basing the timeline and everything in the world that they're using and the stories that they're telling off of stuff that is predominantly white anyway. It's pretty much completely from a Caucasian slash white perspective, however you want to say it. Um, it's based off a novel. So, yeah, but it's, it's, based, it's based on a novel, but it's based on a novel that is based historically in an era and everything that was white. There weren't pretty much any people of color in that region. So, in their defense specifically, I can get it. I completely understand that. Um, so, uh, or wherever they're from, because I'm getting told they're Polish now on Skype as I'm talking from the person who's sitting behind me. But same thing. It's a predominantly white er area, all that. So, and it's a thing that they're still a great gaming company. And the game is fantastic. There's nothing wrong with the game. People are upset about the fact that there are little to no people of color in the entire game. Um, I completely agree in the article about the fact that there need to be more lead characters that are people of color. Because you do have a lot of strong white male leads. I would like to see a strong black female be the lead character of a game. I would love that. I am whiter than white that I almost glow in the dark. And I would love to play some sassy, awesome, strong black chick in a game and be like, yeah, this is awesome. So I'd love to see that. And I would love to see more games that actually take people of color. Like, I was excited over the fact that Assassin's Creed, when they went to Assassin's Creed 3, I don't care what anyone else says, I love the shit out of that game. The fact that they went and did a Native American. And they didn't have another basically rich white 
dude. So it's, I just, I want to see more people of color. I want to see more diversity in general, not just that, but with there being more female leads and things where they don't end up being like the damsel in distress type situation and a random NPC has to save your ass. Like, I, I want to see more of that. I want to see more races represented because there's more than just black and white. There's plenty of people that I'm sure that are Asian and Indian and Native American that would love to see roles that represent their history. If you want to go into historical things, make something that is historically representative of other cultures. You don't just have to stick to the ones that are tried and true and are going to earn you money. Someone break outside the box and completely blow the box apart and make something unique. Because really, that's what the gaming world needs right now. Because we have a lot of, we've seen this concept before, but we're going to paste it onto a basically different background and put some slightly different like characters in it and then resell it. And I really want to see something more diverse. And that goes for the genders, the appearances, the races, everything. Excuse me as I step off my soapbox and let somebody else stand on theirs. All right, so, Bold, do you have a uh, opinion to chime in on all of this? I kind of agree with uh, what Mar what Mark uh, what Felicity said, and that um, you know you have to look at the source material of this, and it makes sense why it was. Uh, why you're dealing? Why the uh, characters were predominantly white? When you look at the source material. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, is that it, my good sir? Yeah, I guess. Okay, so I'll let you go ahead and take a step off of your step so box, and I will step on to mine now. <laughs> For this, yes, as a. Uh, Pacely white, about white as my dag on walls, gamer. I would enjoy seeing the more diversity within the gaming spectrum and realm. I mean, we've seen stories that have been able to hit and stick with people, like the Walking Dead Telltale games. You take a look at the leads there, and the story just hits and it sticks with you. As well, I like the gameplay and things like that. I also know that we have had Assassin's Creed Liberation that has now went multi-platform, so people can play the uh, African female assassin. Just to kind of point out other games that you can play that have the diverse racial leads and things like that. Another thing that I do see as a bit of a problem, but at the same time, it's not incredibly like our fault or anyone's fault in general, is that developers know what sells. And it is the white male protagonist that does sell and it sells quite well does the box need to be broken open for a definite however that's up to the developers to do and if they don't want to take the risk on it that's on them and as a consumer While I can say that, yes, this is what I want, I can't strap a developer to a freaking chair and go, MAKE THIS! Because, you know, there, there's a lot of legal issues that go into that. <laughs> the, thing, the thing with it, mainly, is the fact that it's... You can sit there and list games where, oh, you can totally make your character be this race, this race, or this race in Fallout, or... You can make them be a person of color in Skyrim. Skyrim and in Oblivion and in this and in that. Okay, but 
those are RPGs where you have a high amount of customer, like, not customer, <laughs> character creation where you can customize them. Mm-hmm. That is a completely different story and a completely different realm entirely from what I'm talking about. I'm talking of about course. playing a game like Call of Duty or Halo. One of my favorite things about Halo until they kind of ruined it in the end of 4 is not knowing what Master Chief actually looks like. Because he could have been Asian, he could have been African, he could have been Indian, he could have been anything. And that was one of my favorite things about that until they showed him at the end of 4. Um, so it's it's actually having a big triple A like blockbuster title that has a person of color as the main character. That's what we need more of. Not that you can make it that your character is that way. I would even be okay with if in Mass Effect, if they found a way, this is one example that they added in Fem Shep, where you could play female Shepherd. Why not make it that you could change the race? It's I don't believe it would take that much more effort to make it so that you could switch that. That is something that we like have no clue on. Like I know when it comes to like programming, it can be a it can be tedious, but at the same time there are modders out there who just go, you know what, hey, pff, pff, here this is I, I don't think it's I don't think it's as big a uh, problem as developers try to make it out to be. Yeah. So maybe in due time we will see this start to kind of emerge more or it just may stay the same stagnant uh, stagnant roll slash road it has gone down for quite some time now. So we move from this to the big actually hey Bob can we take like a five minute break I guess and then we and then when we come back we'll start doing the big discussion of the night which is e3 okay see you in five minutes that'll come back so big discussion big topic because it starts next Sunday, 10 o'clock Eastern. It is, I would say, day negative one in a sense, because at this point, day zero with E3, having the five, having five big conferences that day is going to be just off the chain. But I, I say day negative one now because we're going to have Bethesda starting on Sunday. And then, of course, you've got the five usuals of Microsoft, EA, Ubisoft, Sony. Did I miss one in there? I don't know. <laughs> no, you've got it. Okay, no, excuse me. Four bit. Yeah. I miss, I miss uh, math there on that one. And then, of course, on Tuesday, we've got Nintendo... Square Enix, and for the first time ever, PC. AKA so, Steam. AKA Steam. Well, no, it's PC in general. Yeah. It doesn't have to be on Steam. <laughs> of course. There's other platforms. Yeah. Steam, yeah. there's uh, Origin, GOG. Or there's just buying the PC version of the game and putting it on your computer instead but of using the platform. Yeah, but of course. But we've got those eight conferences this year. And before even this whole show in Shebang kicks off, we've already had announcements of XCOM 2. We've had Fallout 4 announced. We've had Darksiders 3. Return of the... Uh, Rise of the Tomb Raider. The Darksiders 3? You, you mean Excuse Dark me. Souls 3? Thank you! I would prefer... To, I would like Darksiders Thank 3. Thank you! I would love Darksiders 3, but yes, Dark Souls 3. Sadly, the company went under, so I'd love someone to pick that up. We've had Forza 6. It goes to show, just like even before the show starts, the plethora of games that we've had announced just so far, even before the show starts. 
Plethoropathora. <laughs> Plethoropathora placenta something. Something with a P. What, with all these conferences, what are we hoping, expecting? Like, what is it? Felicity, I'm coming to you first. Actually, all right. Oh, no more. Okay, so with Bethesda's, I really, 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 really want to see that Fallout 4 is not just pretty. Like, it looks fantastic. I'm super excited for it because I freaking love the entire franchise. But I want to see that it's more than pretty. I want to see that it is still a Fallout game. I want to be able to see some of the fighting. I want to be able to see what the game is going to be like. And hopefully they're going to have it ready, considering they're announcing it now and everything. I'm hoping they have enough to show us some of that. Otherwise, I'm still going to be excited, but I'll be mildly disappointed, and I'll be like, you know what, I'm not going to run out and reserve this right away. I'm going to hold my thoughts, and I'm going to wait. So, Microsoft, I want to see more on Halo 5. I want to see the new Gears game that's been played around with as potentially coming. They're, they, they're saying it's a Gears announcement. I'm not sure if it's going to be a new Gears name, no. game, or if it's going to be a remaster of the f of like the first one or two games. No, see, like, if, oh, sorry to interrupt, but if I'm reading this proper, I think what they're going to go with is I think they're announcing two games. They're announcing a potential remaster and then the new game coming out. Okay. But so, I, mean, I want to see I want to see those um I want to see like I'm not even going to break it down by place now. I want to see more on Kingdom Hearts 3. I want to see more on Dark Souls 3 because we have the leaked stuff so far, but I want to see the actual official stuff. I'm hoping that there may be some gameplay for it because from the leaked stuff, it looks flipping amazing. Um, I really don't want to hear the words Call of Duty during your E3. I just don't. Oh, If please. I do, I may throw things at people. Okay. Because well, Call of Duty is beaten into the dust. It is the deadest of dead horses. And I'm pretty sure that the bones have been ground to the point that a giant can make bread from it. So can we just leave it alone? That's, oh. that's my feeling on that. <laughs> okay, so so what I'm hearing is is that we need to make sure we move any and all throwable objects away from you. Pretty much. Starting that Monday morning. <laughs> Potentially, but yeah, I just I don't want to hear Call of Duty, um, because it's a franchise that literally it's just it's I think it's past its prime, honestly, and I think they need to make like if they're gonna announce it, I want it to be the final game. I want them to announce an end to the era and call it good. Um, what else do I want to see? Um. Square Enix, I'm interested to see what they're going to announce, and PC, I'm super interested to see what they're going to do. PC is kind of the wild card, I think, in E3 this year, oh, yeah. and I'm really excited to see what's going to happen. Alright, so, Bulba, what do you think? What are you hoping to see? What do you make think can show up? Uh, well, I think we've, we're seeing previews of a lot of what's coming already. Uh, you can't go on YouTube right now without seeing some sort of game trailer. Uh, so I think we're going to see game pre actual game footage, hopefully, of those games, and not just more trailers. We've seen uh, trailers for Fallout 4. We've seen trailers for Rise of the Tomb Raider. We've seen uh, there's rumors about new Gears of War. Um, we of course we know a new Call of Duty is coming out. I don't have ho I don't want to see anything about that, but it's going to happen, no matter what Felicity tries to be hopeful about. <laughs> Uh, uh, there is still hope that it won't happen. Maybe, maybe, maybe they'll lose the footage, okay? <laughs> <laughs> for the love of God, whoever is in charge of the Call of Duty announcement, delete the footage for me. Make my day. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think we're going to see a new... I think there's a new Uncharted game coming from uh, from Sony. Dog. There 
is they're doing the, of course, Uncharted 4, and of course, this was announced as early as leaked, so to speak, the collector's edition of Uncharted. So, coming to PS4. Yeah. Um, that. I'm really interested in seeing what's coming out of Nintendo, because there's a lot of rumors coming out, and I hope. Nintendo's not going to shoot themselves in the foot here, but knowing Nintendo, they absolutely will. Um, there's been rumors that we may, uh, we won't see anything about a new console, but that Nintendo may be looking into their new console already. Um, I don't yeah, think the that's the case. I think we may be seeing Nintendo trying to do something multi-platform, or, but um, yeah, I, I'm hoping to hear more about that, but I don't think we will. So, so, since you're, you know, talking about Nintendo, what do you think may come out of them? Oh, we'll probably hear some more Smash, Smash announcements, uh, because they're trying to uh, make that a big deal. So, they'll probably maybe announce some new characters? Uh, I, th I think they're going to try to make it make a big deal of Smash. Um, yeah. I know they've already announced Lucas coming out on the 14th, which they've already said that that's going to be, you know, boom, definitive there. Yeah. Um... I think we're going to see more of that Zelda game. Uh, I think that's for sure. I'd like to see more. I'd like to see a possible Metroid announcement. Um, just to show Did that. you say Zelda in there, Bulba? I said Zelda, yes. Okay, just to let you know, uh, Zelda will not. The new Wii U Zelda game will not be shown at E3 this year. See, that's a mis this mistake, Nintendo, but whatever. We're used to, the, at this point, to. Uh, Waiting forever for a Zelda game, and this game will probably be, probably come out at the end of the uh, Wii U lifespan at this point. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm hoping maybe to see a, a Metroid game because I'd like to see news of a new Metroid game. Okay. Show that they didn't just burn it with Metroid Other M. Is that everything, my good man? Yeah, I don't have much, many high hopes. I'm not as I'm not as attuned to the world of e th to uh, the, the video game world as you tend to be, my good sir. So I have I have very simple uh, hopes as far as Steam, uh, as far as the PC market. I think we're pretty much going to see everything that I think if we're going to see anything, we're going to see essentially indie announcements. Um. I don't think we're going to see, like, because PC pretty much is the, it's also coming out on console. We just did some stuff earlier. Uber, uber, triple A impressive only coming to PC. Unless it's com being announced by Blizzard. That's just me. <laughs> You never know. There may be the like. There may be a War of Warcraft expansion coming from Blizzard <laughs> at this rate. Because the last one, I believe, was the uh, Wrath of Pandora. Yes. The, the Pandora thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. So for mine, definitely want to see more Kingdom Hearts. I really, really want to see that. I want to see. The Gears of War. Potentially, if, you know, Bethesda really wants to blow everybody's minds, or just knock it out of the park, show the next Elder Scrolls game. Not the Elder Scrolls Online, but I'm going with, like, your next Skyrim-esque game. That, I would love to see. I want to see if the rumors potentially are true about uh, Pokemon Yellow Special Edition from Nintendo. I want to see to see if uh, Star Fox is actually going to be a thing. Metroid would be good. Would love to see like a new Pokemon Snap or Pokemon Stadium for that matter. I doubt it, but eh, here's the open. If anything else, I definitely just want to see just new... Like, new IPs that are going to blow me away. And just new games in general, because 
that's as a gamer that's what i'm always hoping for pc of course is my wild card it's going to be a three hour event and in that three hours time it's got a good chance of being either like really good with like a lot of good discussion and because they've got a lot of guests slated for the actual show and it's also got a really good chance of just being in incredibly bad but you kind of live for those moments in e3 there's those talkable like oh my god moments but that is to be decided next starting next sunday with bethesda and we'll see where they go from there for that next week Before we wrap, does anybody have anything they would like to say or mention? I really hope this keeps. But of Someone course... Someone needs to make a uh, Final Fantasy Addictions Anonymous thing for me. I think <laughs> I have a problem. I would like to see a, an actual good Final Fantasy game. That uh, you know, When was the I'm last time we had one? Huh? What was that, Felicity? Um... I, I, I was just saying I'm going to smack you, Bulba, because there are good Final Fantasy games. You Nimrod. <laughs> okay, have we got a, a good one since 10, is my question. That 12, was not online. Yeah, 12 was not horrible, but it wasn't like the like an apex, so to speak. I need to go back and play 12, because it's been forever since I played it. So It seems that they've had their hearts set on, on online for a while now. Online and plus, you know, making every 13 ever. Let's see, oh. we're up to 50 now? I'm kidding, but... Oh, an saying. another thing that I want from E3, because I totally forgot this. Fable announcement! I know that they have a beta for it. I want to see it. <laughs> Fable, of course. <sighs> I signed up for the beta. I've been waiting impatiently. Well, you never know. We may actually get the announcement that says... Boy, here it comes on this day. Anything else, guys? Um, yeah, nothing wait. else for me. I'm good. Ah, well, anything from you? <laughs> and yeah. Okay, so this has been the Critical Loading Era podcast. We will see you next Sunday with all new topics and all new discussions. See you there. Bye. Bye.